due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Red Light District Junior Hockey Talk Show and mayhem behind the mic. If you're not following the BS Boys on JuniorHockey.com, YouTube, or the BSBoys.wordpress.com, then you really need to work on your stocking skills. Here they are, with their Fisher Price broadcast diplomas proudly in hand, the BS Boys. Here we are once again, flinging whatever we can at the wall to see what sticks. Hello and welcome into the Red Light District Junior Hockey Talk Show. We are the BS Boys. Now today's show is going to have a major East Coast feel to it since both of us are from back East. You're from Jersey. Correct. Born in Philadelphia. Grew up in South Jersey. And I'm from Philly. There's certain things back East that has that, you know, that flair that you can't get on the West Coast. For example, Tasty Cakes. Butterscotch crimpets or chocolate cho- cupcakes, Steve? Um, the chocolate cupcakes. Butterscotch crimpets, my way. There's something about a tasty cake. If if those of you that haven't had them, you got to try them. Great little uh, cupcake. I'm not sure if Philly's, or actually the East Coast is happy about this, but Philly's known for scrapple, that indescribable slab of meat that no one really seems to know what goes in it, nor do you want to. It's, one, it's a package you don't want to read the back of. No, and that's why it's indescribable. It's really indescribable. And, of course, the cheese steak. Great sandwich. With or without? Uh, well, here's the thing, though. Without onions. But also without cheese Whiz. Yeah, I, I'm not a cheese Whiz my fan myself. I'd rather have American cheese. American cheese, yeah. So, and there's a certain way you have to actually order uh, the sandwich when you go up to the uh, window. So, yeah, full-on cheese steak. American cheese, got to love it. Now, Pat's and Gino's in South Philly are the places you have to go to uh, get a really good cheesesteak, something we can't really get out here. But nonetheless, we'll be talking to our guest about all of this as soon as we bring him in on the phone. Did you know also, just going back to the uh, cheese whiz thing, that, that's also a really good stain remover? No, I did not know that. Yeah. Are you kidding? No, no. Actually, apparently, if you put a generous supply of cheese whiz on a stain, like a grease-based stain... Rub it in really good, throw it in the washer. I guess Cheese Whiz gets it out. I'll have to try that. I'm sure once people hear that, they're not going to be putting Cheese Whiz on their sandwiches anymore. <laughs> and, you know, it's, and if you don't eat it, you can put it on the shelf with the laundry supplies. There you go. Just, <laughs> just keep it. It's got a shelf life of forever. Forever. Honey, have you seen the Cheese Whiz? Uh, it's in with the laundry soap and the uh, bleach. <laughs> So here we go from cheesesteaks all the way to hockey. On the line of BS, we actually have a young man, Anthony Stolarz. Now, Anthony was drafted in the NHL draft by the Philadelphia Flyers. But this is, this is what's interesting about the whole scenario. Anthony played in the North American Hockey League, the NA. Didn't play in the dub or any major junior right. CHL team. Didn't play in the USHL. Didn't play in the BCHL. It came from the North American League to be drafted in the second round, 45th overall by the Flyers. He was the fourth goalie drafted in the draft and the first U.S.-born goalie drafted. I mean, that's great for a kid coming from the N.A. The N.A. and New Jersey, too. I mean, there's He's a not, boy, yeah. Not a lot of boys uh, get drafted out of Jersey. There's a few. But he had to go all the way down to Corpus Christi in the N.A. to be sort of put on the plateau, put in the spotlight to be seen by a lot of these teams and ultimately getting drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers. So he had some pretty good stats, actually, uh, coming in from last year, the 2011-2012 season. He did. He had 23 wins, 22 losses, four overtime losses, and he ended up with three shutouts for the season. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, A 2.84 goals against and a 92% save percentage. The kid played uh, 50 games, and he's six foot five, 200 pounds. That's huge for a goalie. That's a big boy. Yeah, goalies seem to be getting uh, larger, and it's not as if they're losing any athleticism. They're, they're so gifted athletically, and to be that large, he's young, too. Uh, 18 years old? 18, 19 years old, Could yeah. still be uh, having some growth going there. I would think Certainly so. Certainly weight. Six five, two hundred pounds. Not, not a thick kid, but uh, he, you know, put on a certain regimen i'm sure he's going to be putting on some weight and getting some of that and this is this is what we're talking about also he will now have the opportunity in college and when he opts to go pro 
to have access to some of the best goalie coaches in the world. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, speaking of weight, he's going to the Nebraska Omaha, home of steaks, those big steaks, those corn fed steaks back in Nebraska. He's going to be getting fed well back there as well. What's with you and food? Uh, I haven't eaten dinner yet tonight. So, so we're talking hungry. about steaks, cheese steak, tasty cup cakes, cakes. Cup, you know, cupcakes. We're talking about scrapple. Okay, so we're going to have to stop talking about that. So right now on the phone, we have Anthony Stolars. Anthony, welcome to the Red Light District Junior Hockey Talk Show, man. How are you? I'm doing very well today. Uh, how are you guys? We're doing well. Excellent. Where are you at? You're in uh, Nebraska right now. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. How's the weather? Uh, very hot. Uh, in the 100, I think we hit 102 today, and it's, uh, it's definitely some, get, some getting used to compared to the uh, Texas heat. It wasn't as hot in Texas, surprisingly. It probably is now, but uh, yeah, it's been taking some getting used to. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It's it, Plus, it's muggy. It's got some humidity uh, mm-hmm. working back there. The worst, especially... Especially when we go running uh, for a workout, that uh, you really feel the, humi- uh, the humidity builds up in your lungs, and you're running short of air. Oh yeah, that's brutal. I mean, I remember that, uh, especially from back east. Now let's uh, let's talk about this real quick. Um, in 2010, 2011, you were actually playing with the uh, what the Jersey Hitmen of the Empire Junior Hockey League. Yes. So once that season ended, where where did you want to go? I mean, did you have uh, invites from other teams at the USHL level or the NA level, or what happened after that season with New Jersey? Uh, I ended the season, and um, I was hoping actually to play for the Junior A team in the, uh, the EJHL. But, I mean, uh, just things didn't work out. I mean, uh, they didn't really see me as a one or two goalie. So, uh, you know, I looked elsewhere to the USHL, and uh, – there were a couple teams who, you know, they talked to me, looked at me, but I mean, I played junior D, so I guess that, you know, could have scared them away because of just the, uh, the talent level and maybe they thought I wasn't ready. So, uh, you know, I, I was just at that point, once I got cut from the, uh, Hitman, I just, uh, just wanted to go out and just find a spot to play junior A and, you know, it took me a while to find the team. So you ended up getting invited to the uh, open camp of Corpus Christi, did apparently very well there. Then what happened? You got invited to the main camp? Yeah, so I got invited to the main camp uh, about a month later in August, and uh, I did well there as well. And, I mean, uh, Corpus offered a contract. I mean, I uh, very, very quickly uh, said yes. I mean, uh, you know, it was a great opportunity. Uh, didn't know there was hockey in Texas, especially <laughs> down that south. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, never, never been that close to Mexico. But, I mean, uh, no, it was, uh, you know, it was just something I felt I had to do. I felt I needed to... You know, that was the best opportunity for me. And, I mean, uh, you know, I never thought things would have went as well as they did. Well, you know, here's the thing. This is what, you know, the backstory of you is, I mean, really, really kind of inspiring. Uh, you go from the uh, the Empire Junior uh, League, New Jersey, make it to Corpus Christi. You thought you were going to play about, what, 30-ish games. You end up playing 50 uh, down there as a rookie. Then you go from that to being drafted in the second round you know, by the Flyers. That's kind of like starting a car and jumping right to fifth gear. I mean, who needs second, third, and fourth? Just go for the gusto. Okay. W- what happened? What was it that clicked for you down in Corpus Christi that made your stock rise so much? Because you were listed as 20th in the, uh, you know, the Central Scouting midseason and then fourth at the end of the season. What, what happened to get you to that point? I think it was just a lot of hard work. I mean, uh, and definitely being given an opportunity to play. I mean, Corpus Christi down there, I mean, it was great. Just, uh, you know, they gave me every opportunity, and it was pretty much my job to lose. And, I mean, that was just motivation enough. You know, I never never wanted to, uh, you know, be watching the game from the bench. So, uh, you know, I worked hard every week in practice, you know, busting my tail in, in games and, you know, just try to keep us in every game. I mean, as a goalie, that's the most important thing. You give your team a chance to win, and uh, you know, once in a while, pull out a you know, kind of an upset win. You know, you know, you carry the team. But I mean, uh, you know, did fairly well this year. I mean, uh, just pretty much, in my opinion, just uh, right place, right time. I mean, uh, I played well, and you know, in certain situations with people watching, and I mean, uh, you know, it all boded well for me. Well, I'll tell you, being in the right place at the right time, that that's all part of life. And, and you know, when it starts out that good, it uh, can only get better. Can you uh, just give us an idea of the style of goalie you are? What what do you do? Butterfly, hybrid, stand-up? 
I'm a butterfly goalie. I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of in today's game pretty much what all goalies have to be. I mean, if you look in, you know, the NHL, there's pretty much Tim Thomas and Martin Rodor. Everyone else is, uh, is a strictly butterfly. But I mean, I have some athleticism to my game. I mean, uh, for a six foot five goalie, I'm very, uh, very flexible and, uh, I tend to get a well, move around the crease very well. So I mean, uh, that bodes well. So as long as I'm in the right spot at the right time, uh, with the shooters, I mean, I, I take a lot of, a lot of net away and, uh, you know, it's hard for them to get the puck by me. Are you, uh, are you a patient goalie? Do you like to challenge shooters or do you always let the shooter commit first? Uh, I like to challenge. I mean, I am six foot five. And I mean, uh, sometimes it gets the best of me. Uh, you know, coming too far out and, you know, they just go around me. But I mean, uh, yeah, I like to be a little aggressive. I mean, uh, you, the farther you come out, the, the less angle there is to shoot at. I mean, you want to, you know, be able to use, you know, every advantage to your, uh, every advantage to your ability. And I mean, uh, by doing that and challenging that, I feel it, you know, gives me a little more of an advantage and, you know, it works out more times than it doesn't. Well, it's all about space and time, you know? Yeah. It's really about reading those angles. I'm an ex-goalie coach. My son plays goalie. Greg mm-hmm. used to play hockey. His son. Actually, his older son was a goalie. His younger son played in Dallas, yeah, actually. He, he played for the Dallas Ice Jets. Yeah. So we oh, know. Okay. Yeah, Western yeah, we know all about the, uh, the the hockey down there in Texas. Did you start the season with pads that were too small for you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Where did you dig that up? Uh, I got, uh, I got they're, they're the pads I was wearing last year, and I mean, uh, with going to all the camps and uh, you know going up to New York and having to fly down to Texas for main camp, fly home and fly back to Texas, it was uh, it was really hard for my parents to uh, you know be able to get a new pair of pads. And at the time, there wasn't really a goalie sponsor for the NHL. Mm-hmm. It came in like a little late. And, you know, I was thankful when I saw it with Brian. So once the uh, once I got back down there to start high school, I ordered those pads. And I mean, when they came in, it was probably like a month or two into the season. So for the first month, uh, for the first two months, I used uh, play pads that were two or three inches too small for me. Wow, that could be painful. What size uh, pads? I mean, what, what size pads do you wear now? Uh, thirty-seven plus one. Thirty-seven plus one. What were you wearing? I believe they were thirty-four plus one. Oh my. Lo- so you only had an inch rise. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thirty. Oh, so yeah. your knee had to have been above the cradle then. It was. It was getting close up there. I mean, I think the top, the middle of my knee was at the top of the cradle, and I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, I, thankfully I had knee guards on, so uh, wow. you know, didn't take any of the knee. But yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the only advantage I could really say of having that is they were so small, I was just able to move around so fast. <laughs> well, you know, Marty, Marty Brodeur, he only wears thirty uh, fours. Really? Yeah, he wears. Yeah, he wears uh, really, really small pads because he is so wiry and athletic. He's throwing the pads over his head and you know doing doing the old you know splits and head facing the wrong direction. And it's just the only reason he kept the pads so small was so he could be quicker in the net. Thirty four is pretty mean, small, man. Sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I mean, you know, it's, it's been working for him. So, I mean, I don't think anyone's complaining there. No way. He had an amazing. He had an amazing season. Forty year old guy out there competing with a bunch of kids that could be his son. Oh, absolutely! It's crazy, <laughs> man. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, when did you start playing goalie? Uh, probably when I was about eight years old. Um, I had to wait for my uh, older brother Todd to uh, finish up. He was a goalie as well. I uh, just played youth in New Jersey and played juniors up in Connecticut on the Interstate Junior Hockey League, which is now pretty much like the Empire League. But, uh, no, I just took it up from him. I mean, uh, it was pretty easy with the gear, just hand-me-downs, and I'd wear his stuff. I mean, my first pair of pads were older than me. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, goes to show, uh, you know, just how the difference between uh, the age of uh, him and me is 27 years old. But, I mean, uh, no, I just picked it up from him, pretty much going to the rink, watching his games. I always thought it was interesting. I mean, uh, being a goalie, it's, you know, pretty, it's like a quarterback, you know, so, or a pitcher, you know, the one player who can, you know, change a game. So I always thought, you know, uh, it would be a nice challenge and just a fun position to play. It's a mental thing, man. It's it's really a very mental uh, position. Mm-hmm. And yes. once, uh, let me ask you this, just if you let in a bad goal, are you pretty good at letting it go and just coming back and focusing on the uh, next shot, next shift? Yeah, I'd have to say so. I mean, as a goalie, you know, you said, you know, mental toughness is probably the biggest 
biggest attribute a goalie could have, and I mean, it's probably the most effective. I mean, uh, you know, this year, you know, you, you know, we all give up, we all give up our soft goals. You know, it's just you know how you rebound. But I definitely think, uh, you know, I'm pretty good with my mental toughness. Just giving up a bad goal, I mean, you can't really, you can't do anything about it. I mean, just dwelling on it, it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna affect you, you know, for future shots to come. So just by, you know, pretty much forgetting about it and looking forward to that next shot and focusing on that shot, not the goal, uh, definitely helps. Well, plus you, you know, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You can't change it. Mm-hmm. All you can do is yeah. go forward and possibly, you know, especially as a goalie, you kind of learn the attributes of you know shooters, left-handed, right-handed, where do they like to go, things mm-hmm. like that, so you can try to prevent it maybe from happening again if the puck happens to be on that player's stick. Is it true that up until last season with Corpus Christi, you didn't have a goalie coach or ever worked with a goalie coach? Um, even in Corpus Christi, we really didn't have a goalie coach. Really. Um, <laughs> No, I, I used my older brother. He was uh, grown up, pretty much my mentor whenever he can make it. You know, he was my assistant coach for uh, probably four, three or four years. And uh, just uh, he would help me out, give me pointers. I mean, my dad kind of picked up the position watching him play and watching uh, NHL games. So they, those, you know, my brother and my dad were probably the biggest influences. Uh, just on my game and my development, just uh, pointing things out that I could correct and if I was doing anything wrong. But, I mean, it was a lot different playing in Texas uh, this year because they would have to watch the games on fast hockey. So it was a little a little different. You know, you'd have to tweak it on your own and, you know, just be really aware of what you were doing. Uh, you know, as for me, I had to, uh, you know, in practice pretty much fix it, uh, you know, by myself. I didn't have to, you know, they weren't obviously able to watch practice. And, uh, you know, during the week, just hope I fixed it for uh, the games uh, next week. Well, that's the second time that you've mentioned your older brother. Why don't you give him a shout-out? <laughs> hey, Todd, how you doing? I uh, hope you're listening, and uh, looking forward to seeing you next week. All right. And and for those of, that don't know you, Anthony, how did you get an invite to the Combine? And, and what is that process that you have to go through? Uh, I mean, I was just excited to uh, be invited to the Combine. I mean, I got that email uh, from NHL. And uh, I was just probably the happiest kid alive. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's a one-in-a-lifetime pretty much opportunity. And, I mean, uh, I was just so grateful to be invited. But, I mean, uh, you know, there's <laughs> there's pros and cons of everything. And, I mean, you know, you hear the stories going in, the, the bike test, the physical test, the interviews. But, I mean, uh, all in all, I think it was a, you know, a great process. Uh, and, you know, it was a definitely a good time and learning experience for me. Uh, going in, you start out with the interviews and, you know, I – had 19 interviews, so, uh, you know, I was kept busy throughout the week, and, uh, you know, you're just always moving, there's always something to do, and, I mean, it's just uh, so professionally run, and then, uh, you know, obviously the physical testing, I mean, it's, uh, whew, what can I say, other than uh, it was just, uh, it was just a grind, I mean, you start out, and uh, they do all the, the doctor tests on you, and making sure you're healthy and ready to go, and, I mean, you just go in the room with with all the media and the scouts and the GMs watching you, uh, watching you test. And I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's a little nerve wracking. And then, you know, obviously they saved the best for last with the wing eight and the VO2. So, uh, you know, those are definitely the top, two toughest, two toughest, uh, exercises we had to do. And I mean, uh, yeah, I've never done anything like that, but, uh, you know, all in all, it was just a great week and I really enjoyed myself there. So the high tech, world we live in, the NHL sends you an email to invite mm-hmm. you to the combine. Yes. Twist it. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. How'd they do it before? It would be so tough to call everybody, I guess. How many How many uh, players were at the combine? I believe it was 105 this year. Oh, I guess wow. an email would work. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on out and enjoy it. You get to the combine, you get all these interviews did you have any clue, and I know you've been asked this before, how interested did Philly seem in you when they interviewed you? Did you get any sense of going, yeah, these guys might pick me? Did they give you any sense like that? Um, I, I will have to say Philly was my quickest interview out of uh, any team. I went in, interviewed with them, and it was just a quick probably two minutes just get to know uh get to know the, the head scouts that were there and uh, they said that, you know, they'd be in contact with me, uh, you know, up to the draft and, uh, you know, they'd like to for me to talk to their, uh, their goalie guy, Neil Little, who's seen me play uh, a numerous amount of times uh, in Texas. 
But I mean, I'd have to say they were definitely my quickest interview. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, it was a good interview. It went well. I mean, uh, you know, it was, it was relatively easy. So, I mean, uh, you know, it was just a little surprising, I guess you could say, when, you know, you think about the interview process and, you know, teams have been contacting you, you know, throughout the, you know, the weeks leading up to the draft and obviously at the combine, you know, but I mean, Philly really wasn't that interested. And from my perspective, I mean, I guess you could say in terms of just contacting me and talking to me, but I mean, uh, no, I mean, I'm just, you know, just happy to be drafted by the Flyers. So, so how tough was it to sit there at the, uh, at the draft? You probably get your family with you, some friends, and, and, and waiting for your name to be called. Not only waiting for your name to be called, but your city in Pittsburgh, too. It was a little, you, you think in the back of your head, you know, you don't know when you're going to go. You don't know what's going to happen. But, I mean, uh, for me, it wasn't about where or when. I just wanted to hear my name get called. And, I mean, obviously, the sooner the better. And, I mean, I guess you'd say my name was called <laughs> sooner than better. I mean, I was, mid, you know, first round of the second day, so I didn't really have to wait too long. But, I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, you just sit there and pretty much I just enjoyed it with my family. I mean, you look where I was a year ago. You know, never did I think I'd be sitting at the NHL draft waiting for my name to be called. But, I mean, uh, no, we just, as a family, you know, it was good to good to meet up with them, good to see them. And, I mean, uh, it was just a fun, fun experience for us all. And, you know, I'm just so happy that I was able to share it with them. Well, it's definitely a, uh, a lifetime memory. And, you know, oh, the, yes. you know, the thing that we always say is, being drafted is like knocking on the door and having them open the door up. Well, the next step mm-hmm. is to be invited in to the party. And that, that's, mm-hmm. I'm sure, going to be your next step is, is busting hump back there in school. You have so much to look forward to at such a young age, man. That's, that's got to be exciting for you. Let me, um, let me ask you to do this for me, okay? This is going to be kind of tough, so you got to kind of dig deep. I'm going to ask you a couple questions and just give me a real quick answer, okay? Okay. Okay. So when you put on the orange and black with the flyer logo on front, what are the fans going to see in you? Uh, they're going to see a hardworking goalie who, uh, you know, is just going to do his best to, uh, you know, end the end the drought of uh, the uh, Stanley Cup. I mean, uh, you know, I think the last one I won was in 1975. I mean, I'm just going to do my best to, uh, you know, just hopefully lead the lead the Flyers to a Stanley Cup. Pats or Geno's when it comes to cheesesteaks? Geno's. With cheese whiz or without cheese whiz? Uh, without cheese whiz. Nah, that a boy. There you go. And you're going to actually try Scrapple when you go back there, right? Yes, yes, of course. Ah, I like it. What is the one thing you need to work on to really raise your game up? I'm going to have to say just uh, solidifying my game, just the, the technical aspects of it. Uh, just, I mean, like I said, I've never had a goalie coach before, so working uh, with Brian Renfrew at UNL will be huge for me. And, uh, you know, just learning, you know, the ins and outs of having an actual goalie coach and having someone there who, you know, can guide me will, I think, just uh, help me all around. And, you know, just him being there and being able to correct things for me, I think, will just help me be a better goalie. Did you graduate high school okay. down in Texas? Yes, I did. Yes, how, I did. How is that not graduating with possibly the class you started with back home? <clears throat> uh, it was definitely, it was a little, you know, a little rough. I had a lot of friends back home. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of them played hockey. You know, I played for my high school hockey team uh, my sophomore and junior year. But, I mean, uh, you know, just kids you grew up with, you know, you hung out with, uh, you know, every day playing, you know, baseball, football in the streets with. I mean, it was a little hard, but, you know, you have to make sacrifices, uh, especially as a hockey player. And, I mean, uh, you know, graduating Texas uh, for high school was one of mine. So, I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do. Anthony, are you a good chirper? A good chirper? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm more of a, a shy, a little quiet guy, and I just, uh, just let my actions speak for themselves. So you don't chirp out no. there in the ice? No, not too much. I mean, really? uh, it takes a lot. I'd have to say, yeah, it takes a lot for me to, uh, you know, get going. But I mean, that now I'm a relatively quiet guy. Do you ever, you ever get chirped at and, and just start laughing because what they say is, is so funny? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I got tripped a lot for my pads last year. I mean, Corpus's colors were red and black, and, you know, here I am wearing blue and silver pads. But, I mean, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, chirping's the, you know, the good way to get inside of, you know, a person's head, but you just, you know, being mentally tough and just, uh, you know, just block it out. Got to ask you, have you ever been in a goalie fight? Um, in practice once. In practice, how'd it go? 
Yes. Uh, I went, went pretty good. I fought, uh, <laughs> last year at the Hitman, I fought one of the goalies, and, uh, you know, I had a, the size advantage, so I'd say things went, went my way. <laughs> Well, six five, two hundred pounds. I would imagine they would. They would. In most cases, yeah. You probably got the you got the reach of like a you know albatross. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. Now we have this periodic table of goaltending elements. Did you realize that someone did that on you? Uh, yes, I believe it was the goalie guild. It is the goalie guild. Yeah. So, do you remember what the, your strengths were that they came up with on that periodic table? Uh, there was, I believe, seven. Correct. There's actually uh, eight. Eleven. Eight? Yeah. Uh, athleticism, yep. I know it was one. Um, playing the puck. Yep. Like, stick work, um, like holes. Not the, uh, the holes, I guess you say. Yeah, the squeeze, that squeeze them. Yep, that's one of them. Squeeze holes. Competitiveness, aggressiveness. I mean, that's all I can really remember if those were any of them. Uh, you're pretty close. So you got the athleticism, the puck handling, and the what they call squeezing the holes off, getting rid of the five hole. They also have character, body size, which obviously you have reflexes, communication. Mm. That's a great attribute to have. So they have communication down, and then acrobatics. Acrobatics. <laughs> okay. I, I guess that would be the same as athleticism, but I would think so. Uh, apparently, the acrobatic aspect is if you're caught out of position you just pretty much re resort to whatever it takes to uh, stop the puck. So we, we looked at that. We found it. We thought those are great attributes to have as a, as a goaltender. One last question. We're going to let you go. Do you have a Twitter account that uh, people might want to uh, follow you on to keep up with what you're going through here there in college and making it to the pros? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> what is that? Uh, it's Stoli the goalie, uh, and it's spelled S-T-O-L-I-E, uh, the, and then just goalie. Very nice. Do you have many Pretty people cool. following you right now? Uh, I didn't actually before the draft, but once uh, once I got drafted, I have now have 4,100 followers, I believe. Very good. That's pretty good. That. You're about 12,000 behind us, though, buddy. You really got to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute! We, we don't have a Twitter account. No, that's our imagination. Yeah, yeah, we're we're uh -huh. much bigger in our own yes. head. Steve was chirping you there. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Hey, uh, listen, we really appreciate the time there, Anthony, and we wish you nothing but the best of luck with your uh, journey to the uh, NHL. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, finish up with before we let you go? Uh, no, I'm good. I just want to, you know, thank all of you guys for uh, having me on. It was a uh, it was a fun time. Yeah, well, you know, that's that's our main goal is to be fun. Not professional, but fun. Because <laughs> we have no idea what we're doing here on the Red Light District yeah. Junior Hockey Talk Show. Anthony, listen, you take care of yourself, and uh, we're going to be keeping close tabs on you. And maybe somewhere down the road, we we'll actually get to talk to you when you're wearing the orange and black. All right, that sounds great. Thank All right. you. All right, you're take up. care. Good luck this weekend. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. There he is. Great kid. A lot of fun to uh, talk to. I love the maturity. Yes. level um, he doesn't seem like one that would get rattled easily and I, I think nothing but uh, good things are around the bend for uh, this young man especially going to Philadelphia you know my home city your kind of home, home city. city so uh, wearing the orange and black I think the uh, the flyer fans are going to really enjoy watching this young man grow we sure appreciate the time you spent listening to us babble here on the internet take care everybody Safe home. Bye bye. Just know I have a whole bag of shh with your name on it. <laughs>